Our next story concerns a subject that still remains just a somewhat a delicate topic. My guests are first Mr. Lex Watson. Mr. Watson is a lecturer in government at Sydney University and Mr. Robert French, a, go a government archivist. Mr. Watson and Mr. French this week signed statutory declarations admitting breaches of the New South Wales Crimes Act. The statutory declarations which detail their homosexual activities over a number of years were then handed to the head of the vice squad in Sydney. Mr. Watson and Mr. French hope to achieve a test case to force the New South Wales government to decriminalise homosexuality. Homosexuality has not been a crime in South Australia since 1975, nor in Victoria since 1980. But will New South Wales take the challenge? Well, on Monday, Detective Inspector Ernie Shepherd, who received the declarations, was quoted as saying, these men are using the vice squad as a means to an end, and I'm not interested in their campaign. But yesterday, Inspector Shepherd was a little less sure. He told Good Morning Australia he was not prepared to say whether or not he has decided to arrest our guests. And good morning, Lex. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Kerry. Well, when you did hand these declarations to uh, Inspector Shepherd, he wasn't sure whether he was going to arrest you or not. Now, what was his immediate attitude and what did you expect? First of all, Lex. Well, I don't know what we expected. What, what his attitude seemed to be was a bit um, of curiosity, and he just simply sat there, read the um, statutory declarations, and tried to give them back to us, and um, seemed to think that we were doing some sort of stunt. So he insisted that he keep them, and he said, well, thank you very much, and we left. He was um, fairly blank about it all. Robert, One gets what? the impression that he was fairly embarrassed, I think, by the whole um, matter. And in a sense, um, I think he felt he'd been caught out a bit. Um, I don't think he believed that anybody would have the, the gall to, in fact, sign such a declaration and present it to him um, in person. Yeah, especially because the Vice Squad has this notion that homosexuality is all something that happens obscurely out there and it's all sinister and they have to chug out in the middle of the night and uncover it and go shock gasp, you see. And mm. they, I think they were very puzzled by these, these strange people openly admitting it and, and basically challenging them to... Um, to <clears throat> putting them in this, this extraordinary bind that they're prepared to go out in the middle of the night and prosecute people and have flying squads of eight and ten plainclothes detectives. And we were just saying to them, look, if you want to do that, we're doing exactly the same thing in effect. Uh, why not arrest us? The and they can't understand this. The what object sort of also, oh, sorry, the object also was to highlight the fact that really the police are very selective in the way they prosecute these laws. I mean, people like Lex and myself have been known as, as gay for, for, for quite some time now, and yet the, the police have never come around and bothered to interview us about breaches of the law. But no, they'll go out in the middle of the night and pick on people and use the laws to harass people. So you two personally have never been treated in a very aggressive manner by the police? Well, not, not in terms of, of our behaviour. I mean, sometimes you get rather aggressive police when, you, when you're in a demonstration and things. But in, as far as this stuff is concerned, they just think that it's, it's amazing. So what you're trying to do is basically just decriminalise homosexuality in New South Wales because it has been legalised in other states. Now, what's the difference between legalising and decriminalisation? Well, what, what we want, let's put it this way, what we want is the same laws to apply to homosexual men as now apply to lesbian women and heterosexual acts in this state. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's what exists in South Australia and Victoria. The now, same laws. La let's assume that does happen. <clears throat> what do you say and what's your attitude toward people who say homosexuality is fashionable and uh, can definitely uh, be imposed on young, very young, impressionable people. Oh, well, it's completely untrue and it hasn't happened anywhere else. I mean, what, what, what opponents of law reform have got to do is simply answer the charge. No adverse reaction has occurred in South Australia, no adverse reaction has occurred in Victoria, no adverse reaction has occurred in any of the places in Western Europe which in many cases removed these laws something like 170 years ago. I mean, the onus of proof is on them to show that any of of these supposed adverse effects happened in France, in Spain, in Italy, in Holland, Belgium and so on. And there's simply, there's no evidence for it. When the community thinks about homosexuals, they think of the quote, mincing queen, if I may use that expression. Now, uh, w what do you say and how do you think that uh, your particular homosexual community can combat that as far as com uh, community attitudes? Well, you don't, why, why combat it? I mean, if somebody is a mincing person, whatever that means, is a bit effeminate. So what? They may also be heterosexual. But I don't see why one has to combat those sorts of things. What people have to realise is that um, homosexuals um, are a range of, of um, particular images just as heterosexuals are. So what? They're your neighbours next door, they're the people on Oxford Street, they're 
everywhere. Mm. 10% of the community, at least. Okay, finally, what will happen if you are not arrested and this doesn't go through? What's your next step? Well, the next step is to, is to say to the police, okay, you've said you've been doing raids on gay bars and things this year, and you've said it is our duty to act. We will be negligent in our police duty if we don't act. Okay, if you're not prepared to act against us, why did you do that? And what we're saying to the government is nobody else that I know of can admit to an offence which carries a maximum penalty of 14 years jail in this state and s wander around the streets and go on television and say, yes, last night, last weekend, whatever, I committed an offence which carries a maximum of 14 years jail and nothing will happen to us. And that, that says to the parliament, both the government and the opposition, these laws are ridiculous. You cannot leave laws on the books which you can simply openly and very publicly flout, get rid of the damn things, and at the same time drop the charges against the people who are now, and the some 27 that we know of currently before the New South Wales courts, drop the charges against those people. If you're not prepared to charge us, get those people out of the court, leave them alone, tell the vice squad to go away and let's get on with a more just and, and equitable society. I should say also that we have, in fact, had quite a number of people that have signed these declarations, not just ourselves, and, and more people each day ring us and say, look, we'd like to take part in the campaign, and anybody who likes to join us can contact us on Post Office Box 9, Darlinghurst 2010. In Sydney? In Sydney. Great. Lex Robert, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Lex Watson and Robert French, two homosexuals trying to be arrested. They uh, would deserve a maximum sentence of 14 years if prosecuted. They're trying to uh, prove a test case in New South Wales to have homosexuality decriminalised.